guys, it's Miss Karen, the Young Adult Librarian at the Goshen Public Library, back with Five on Friday, our third edition. This week, we are going to be featuring five books. Um, they're historical fiction, and they feature strong female characters. I decided to do this theme for the first week of March, because March is Women's History Month, so I'm going to show you five of my favorite um, historical fiction books that have strong female leads. Um, hopefully, you'll find one you like just as much as I did. So, the first book that I'm showing you this week is The Downstairs Girl by Stacey Lee. Um, the Downstairs Girl came out in 2019. Um, it's set in Atlanta, and let me tell you about it. Some secrets just won't stay buried. By day, 17-year-old Joe Kwan works as a lady's maid for the cruel daughter of one of the wealthiest men in Atlanta. But by night, Joe moonlights as the anonymous author of a newspaper advice column for genteel southern ladies, Dear Miss Sweetie. When her column becomes wildly popular, she uses the power of the pen to address some of society's ills, but she's not prepared for the backlash that follows when her column challenges fixed ideas about race and gender. While her opponents clamor to uncover the secret identity of Miss Sweetie, a mysterious letter sets Joe off on a search for her own past and the parents who abandoned her as a baby. But when her efforts put her in the crosshairs of Atlanta's most notorious criminal, Joe must decide whether she, a girl used to living in the shadows, is ready to step into the light. So this is The Downstairs Girl by Stacey Lee. Um, it is funny. It's not a super long read, so it wouldn't take you that long. Um, but it has lots of um, social commentary on race and gender. Um, but it is actually really funny um, and interesting. There's a lot of um, historical detail in here that I was unaware of before I read it. So I highly recommend The Downstairs Girl by Stacey Lee. My next book is a little different. It is a collection of short stories. It's called A Tyranny of Petticoats. Um, 15 Stories of Bells, Bank Robbers, and Other Badass Girls. Um, it's edited by Jessica Spotswood. Um, lots of different authors contributed uh, to this collection, so let's see. Crisscross America on dog sleds and ships, stagecoaches and trains, from pirate ships off the Carolinas to the peace, love, and protests of 1960s Chicago. Join 15 of the most talented writers working in young adult literature today. An impressive sisterhood that includes Elizabeth Wine, Marie Lu, Marissa Meyer, and Kekla Magoon on a thrill ride through history with American girls dragging their own stories. They are monsters and mediums, bank robbers and barkeeps, screenwriters and school teachers, heiresses and hobos. They're charting their own path in often hostile lands, using every weapon in their arsenal, reckoning with murderers and marriage proposals. Along the way, they might kiss girls or boys or no one at all because they're too busy facing spies and spitfires, ghosts and goddesses. But one thing's for sure, they're going to have a hell of a story to tell. So this collection um, spans all different times in history, um, but it is all historical fiction and it features women throughout. So we have authors, like I mentioned in the preview, there's The Journey by Marie Lu, um, High Stakes by Andrea Kramer, um, see some of the time periods are the um, uh, 1710 British North America we've got 1945 Los Angeles um, Bonnie and Clyde 1934 Indiana um, we've got 1826 New Orleans so it's all over the country um, all different time periods um, but the thing that ties them all together is it's all very, very strong women featured uh, as the main characters. So short stories are great if you're just looking for something quick to read um, or if you like a lot of variety. So check out A Tyranny of Petticoats, um, edited by Jessica Spotswood. My third choice this week is Etiquette and Espionage by Gail Carriger. This is the first book in the Finishing School series. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about it. It's steampunk, um, so if you really like steampunk, you're going to definitely want to check this one out. 14-year-old Sophronia is a great trial to her poor mother. Sophronia is more interested in dismantling clocks and climbing trees than in proper manners, and the family can only hope that company never sees her atrocious curtsy. 
Mrs. Tevenick is desperate for her daughter to become a proper lady. So she enrolls Sophronia in Mademoiselle Geraldine's Finishing Academy for Young Ladies of Quality. But Sophronia soon realizes the school is not quite what her mother might have hoped. At Mademoiselle Geraldine's, young ladies learn to finish everything. Certainly, they learn the fine arts of dance, dress, and etiquette, but they also learn to deal out death, diversion, and espionage in the politest possible way, of course. Sophronia and her friends are in for a rousing first year's education. Set in the same world as the Parasol Protectorate, this YA series debut is filled with all the saucy adventure and droll humor Gail Carriger's legions of fans have come to adore. So, um, this is set in a finishing school for girls, and um, if you're not sure what a finishing school is, it's basically a school that girls were sent to to learn how to be proper ladies. So this finishing school not only teaches them how to be proper ladies, it also teaches them how to be good spies. So they learn how to kill and spy and all of those other wonderful things that um, spies do. So if that sounds like fun, check out the series Etiquette and Espionage. There are four books in the series. Um, we have all four of them here, so you can start with this one and then move on to the rest. My fourth book today is My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. My Lady Jane is part of the Jane books, so um, they have several of them. They focus on different Janes from history. Uh, this one focuses on Lady Jane Grey. So, Edward is the King of England. He's also dying, which is inconvenient as he's only 16 and he'd much rather be planning for, the, for his first kiss than considering who will inherit his crown. Jane is Edward's cousin and far more interested in books than in romance. Unfortunately for Jane, Edward has arranged to marry her off to secure the line of succession. And there's, a something, there's something a little odd about her intended. Call him Gifford. Gifford is a horse. That is, he's an Ethian for the uninitiated. Every day at dawn, he becomes a noble chestnut steed, but then he wakes at dusk with a mouthful of hay. It's all very undignified. The plot thickens as Edward, Jane, and G are drawn into a dangerous conspiracy. With the fate of the kingdom at stake, our heroes will have to engage in some conspiring of their own, but can they pull off their plan before it's off with their heads? So, as you can tell, this is not um, true, serious historical fiction. This is not the true story of Lady Jane Grey. But it is funny and interesting, and um, it's a good read. I highly recommend it. Actually, I recommend all the Jane books. So if you like this one, check out the other ones also um, if you get a chance. They're very, um, they're very funny and interesting, and um, they have a lot of um, fun details in them. So... My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. My last choice for this week's Five on Friday is These Shallow Graves by Jennifer Donnelly. Um, Jennifer Donnelly is one of my favorite YA authors, um, and These Shallow Graves is one of my favorite books by her. Um, it's a mystery. It's got a great uh, female lead character. Um, it's very suspenseful. Um, really checks all the boxes, so let me tell you about it. Jo Montfort is beautiful and rich, and soon, like all the girls in her class, she'll graduate from finishing school and be married off to a wealthy bachelor, which is the last thing she wants. Jo secretly dreams of becoming a writer, a newspaper reporter like the trailblazing Nellie Bly. Wild aspirations aside, Jo's life seems perfect until tragedy strikes. Her father is found dead. Charles Montfort accidentally shot himself while cleaning his revolver. One of New York City's wealthiest men, he owned a newspaper and was a partner in a massive shipping firm, and Joe knows he was far too smart to clean a loaded gun. The more Joe uncovers about her father's death, the more her suspicions grow. There are too many secrets, and they all seem to be buried in plain sight. Then she meets Eddie, a young, brash, infuriatingly handsome reporter at her father's newspaper and it becomes all too clear how much she stands to lose if she keeps searching for the truth. Only now it might be too late to stop. The past never stays buried forever. Life is dirtier than Joe Montfort could ever have imagined, and the truth is the dirtiest part of all. So, um, kind of similar to the Downstairs Girl, we have another um, main character who writes 
or wants to write for a newspaper, um, and her name is Jo, imagine that. Um, but uh, again, this is a very different story than that one, but also just as interesting. So check out These Shallow Graves by Jennifer Donnelly. So that's my five for this week. Um, we've got These Shallow Graves, My Lady Jane, Etiquette and Espionage, A Tyranny of Petticoats, and The Downstairs Girl. So I hope I have given you some ideas to kick off Women's History Month with some great YA reads. If you have any um, books you want to recommend that feature strong female leads uh, throughout history, let me know. I'm happy to hear about them. Um, tune in next week to see what, uh, what's new for Five on Friday. Have a great week. Bye.